Hi all, today I'm going to teach you how to make a multi-purpose liquid soap and I'm going to dive deeper into explaining each of the components we are using, their functions, why we need it in the soap, the quantity that is best used for the particular quantity we'll be working on. For this production, I'll be making a 30 liters production and I'll actually state the recipe in the middle of the video for you guys to see. So just stay behind, like this video. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you. If you are new to my channel, subscribe to my channel, like this video and ring your notification bell. In this channel, we do everything DIY ranging from laundry soap, liquid soap, and all household cleaning agents. So just stay tuned and watch how we make this production. Thank you. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for not going anywhere. Thank you for not rushing out. And thank you for actually liking this video so that other persons can see it. We'll be making a 30 liters production. So I started first by measuring 27 liters of water and I kept 3 liters of water aside which I'll use to dissolve all the powdered chemical components that we'll be using in this particular production. I will divide the 3 liters into all the powdered ingredients. Like this is my SLS, 600 grams of my SLS. I dissolve it with some part of water and set it aside so that it can dissolve perfectly. This is containing my soda ash and my STTP, my sodium tripolyphosphate. I dissolved it and set it aside. If you're already into liquid soap production, you may have your method of making it, but there is nothing wrong with learning a new one every day. If you are new into making liquid soap, please follow this procedure carefully so that you will not have a very bad outcome when you make yours. What I have here is my caustic soda, which is the strong base I'll be using for this production. I also dissolved it and set it aside. Inside the bottles are my foam booster. I'm using a total of one liter of foam booster for this production. The brown substance you are seeing is this, in this bottle is my sulfonic acid, also known as lapsa. Some people may also call it slurry. I'm making use of 500 ml of it. And then this is my fragrance. For the fragrance, I'll be using banana and tangerine fragrance for this production. Then we'll be using texapon 2, 500 grams of texapon for this production. And then our natural soul will be 200 grams of natural soul. Natural soul is also called HEC, another brand of HEC, hydroxyl ethyl cellulose. This is a plant-based gum. We use it as a thickener to thicken our liquid soap because nobody wants to buy a liquid soap that is water. So when you measure out these 200 grams of uh, natural soap, it is enough to thicken your 30 liters production even more. It can easily dissolve in water, that means it's very hydrophilic. Immediately you pour it inside your water, it will start dissolving. And then you make sure you stir very well so that it can swell perfectly without having any lumps at this first uh, chemical that we are adding if you do not mix your natural soul perfectly if there is any settlement underneath your um, bucket of liquid soap at the end of the production you will have lumps i know some people have been witnessing it having lumps in their production that is actually some coagulants of the natural soul that did not dissolve properly so it is best for you to first add in this nitro so stir it very well and allow it to sit for at least 5 to 10 minutes before you can even continue this production. This natural soap that we are adding into this liquid soap, immediately you add it, you will notice that there is a little bit, the viscosity of your liquid soap will change a little bit. But to be able to activate this natural soul, to give us the thickness that we need, we need to introduce some base. Some strong base, or should I say some strong alkali like the sodium hydroxide, which is our caustic soda. 45 gram of 
sodium hydroxide is enough for you to make this thirty liters production. Immediately you add in your caustic soda solution, you will notice that your liquid soap will start getting thicker. This is to explain to you that natural soap is a, uh, a, a liquid soap thickener, water thickener, but it can only be activated when it is in an alkaline medium. So the caustic soda that we added actually changed the water. Water is normally in a pH of around 6 to 7 or 8. But immediately we introduced the caustic soda, we shifted or tilted the pH level to towards 11, 12 and 13. And that is the point where the natural soil can actually tick in perfectly, at least from 9 to 10. So you see, this is why we chemically need caustic soda in our production. The second reason why we need caustic soda will be explained when we add our sulfonic acid. I'm making this video very detailed so that people will actually understand why we add every particular ingredient in this liquid soap. The second base that we'll be adding is our soda ash. I dissolve the soda ash and the STPP together inside the same bowl and then I added it. As you add your soda ash, you will also notice that your solution will also start getting thicker compared to where it was before when we added the caustic acid because the soda ash is also alkaline so the more you add it the thicker your solution will get as you add it you will notice some white streaks but ignore mix thoroughly the more you mix the more they dissolve the more you mix the more they dissolve if you actually don't mix perfectly at this stage you also have some settlement some sediment under your production once you are done so mix vigorously you can see how thick it is right now for the sttp the sodium tripolyphosphate we are adding it to help us to soften the water soda ash also is a water softener but sttp does the better job just like we make our production you look at your money fresh you buy the liquid soap you buy in the market like money fresh or mama lemon and you turn the back and you see them adding edta ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid that edta is a water softener it's supposed to it's supposed to add um as a binder to prevent your soap um, from forming scums when your end users use it that is the same work that stpp does so once you use it in your water what STPP does is that it binds to all the calcium and magnesium ions that is in the water, which would have made your water to be hard, allowing the surfactants that you use in that particular soap production to function properly. Surfactants are the foaming agents that we, that we use in making our liquid soap, such as the texapon, the sulfonic acid, the SLS, all those are foaming agents. Foaming agents are also known as surfactants. And if you want your surfactant to function properly and foam well when you use a drop of liquid soap, you should also do well to make sure that you add in some uh, collectors like EDTA or STPP to your liquid soap. After adding that and mixing it properly, the next thing I'm adding is the texapon. I'm using 500 grams of texapon for this production. This texapon will serve as my primary surfactant. This is the main thing that will be able to remove oil stains from plates when we use it. It's the main thing that will be able to form a good bubble head, large bubbles when you use it to wash your plate, to clean your surfaces, to mop your floors, whatever thing you want to use your multi-purpose liquid soap for. Note that because of the way we produce this soap, you cannot use this particular kind of production to wash your car, to wash your vehicle, in order not to stain your paint. So the next thing I added now, you saw me add was the SLS. SLS is also serves as a foaming agent, also serves as a foaming booster. People call it in the market as detergent. Yes, that is what gives you that foaming property that you see when you mix your soap together with water. If you put enough SLS in your liquid soap, your soap will foam perfectly. So if you have been making soap and it has not been foaming properly, try and work on how you add your SLS to it. 
SLS can be added more to your liquid soap production and it will not really alter your pH that much compared to when you add something like sulfonic acid. Now what I'm adding right now is a foam booster. These foam boosters chemically, they are made to be able to boost or to help the foaming agents that you added. Like I explained before that the foaming agents are the surfactant. So what the foam booster does is to help them to function properly, to give you more bubbles and to help and boost the foaming property of your soaps. That is why we add the foam booster. And because they are alkaline in nature, so they may also help to thicken your soap. At this point, yes, the soap is still thick as we are going, but immediately we introduce our sulfonic, which is um, the acid in this particular production. It will drop the pH of the soap and make the soap texture to become lighter compared to how it was before. So you work with measurement. I'm using 500 ml of sulfonic acid for this production. If you use more than 500 ml of sulfonic in this production, your soap will become watery. That is why some persons, they will say, when I was producing my soap, it was thick, but at a certain time, when I finish, it now became watery. It's because you added too much sulfonic without backing it up with enough base. That is chemistry. Right now, all the bubbles you are seeing on top is just the sulfonic acid oh. being activated with the caustic soda that we added. I told you earlier that we have two functions for the caustic soda. The caustic soda we also use to activate our sulfonic acid. Sulfonic acid, if it is not activated, it will not foam, it will not remove oil stains. So you have to make sure that there is caustic soda in the solution to be able to activate the sulfonic acid. If not, it won't work properly. What I added next now was the my preservative. There are so many preservatives there in the market. You can make use of any one. For this production, I'm using liquid Jama Plus and then sodium benzoate. Sodium benzoate is the most easily found. You can see it anywhere in a baking store, in a chemical store. You can buy it. There are so many preservatives. You can search through your Google and search for good preservatives for liquid soap. And you'll see so many of them. You also try and browse and research about their usage rates. That way you will know how many to use per, per, per quantity of production you are making. You can actually use a combination of... Um, uh, preservatives like big companies do to have a good effect a good uh, shelf life on your liquid soap production why do you need to preserve your soap remember that the main signal for this soap is natural so and i said that it's plant-based in the beginning if you are you make your soap without adding any preservatives to it bacteria will actually act on it microorganisms will cloud your your production because of the water you added to it and they will feed on the gums they will feed on the natural soil and then they will it will weaken your soap after two weeks keeping your soap under sun making your soap very comfortable for microorganisms to grow in they will eat up the gums and it will start having molds black molds and then your soap will run watery instantly I know so many people have faced this. This is because you did not use the correct amount of preservatives that you need. After adding the preservative, you can now go ahead and add in your fragrance. I'm using a total of 80 ml of my fra of fragrance for this particular production. So guys, make sure you add in good quality preservatives in your liquid soap. If you want to learn more about how to make standard liquid soap, I have a class for liquid soap you can join and you can make soap that looks like this on your screen. You can make soap that looks like the store-bought grade of liquid soap and I give you out a standard operating procedures. I mean soap that is this glassy and glossy. Soap that you can actually package and put your label and send out to, uh, to bigger supermarkets. So you can join the liquid soap class and you learn more because I have a lot to teach you guys. So after adding everything, what I did was I divided the 30 liters into three batches. That is 10, 10 liters each and set it aside to color it. For the first one, I needed a bridal blue color, so I combined my turquoise blue color with uh, purple to be able to get the blue I needed. I wanted to have that kind of an antiseptic blue color 
in this liquid soap you can see the soap bubbling perfectly this is a very good production I, I made right here follow this procedure perfectly and you have a good soap for the second one i wanted a sweet orange so i mixed a little bit of red color and then a yellow color to give me the color that i wanted for the next one i wanted the lemon color i don't like the neon lemon that is in the market i wanted a just a mild lemon color so i mixed a deep green color with some tint of yellow to be able to um, get this color this is more like viva lemon color that we all know in the market so that was how i got the colors i used for this production and at the end look at how thick and luxurious the liquid soap looks like at this point you can get your sterile containers and bottle your liquid soap and you are good to start selling to your friends to your well wishers and all i have a lot to discuss with you about liquid soap i have a lot to tell you about liquid soap that you would want to hear if you want to join the liquid soap paid group you can contact the whatsapp number on your screen send us a whatsapp number and we'll add you up right away thank you